we welcome you again to another lecture in our series healing herbs healing naturally with herbs here on the 777 prayer and health ministries let me establish this morning that um anything we share on this platform is not intended to treat or diagnose any condition if you are not well we encourage you to please see your health care provider nothing that we share should be incorporated without professional advice we are not intending to treat or diagnose anyone utilizing this lecture or this presentation we want you to know, though we believe in preventative health, we believe that God is able to heal and restore his people utilizing natural remedies. And so we teach from three perspectives. On this conference, we teach from the Bible, which is our rule of faith and practice. And um, our theme text is 1 Corinthians 10, 31. The Bible says, whether therefore you eat or drink or whatsoever you do, do all to the glory of God. We believe that the Bible is a rule of faith and practice. And God has promised, as he said in Jeremiah 30, verse 17, he says, for I will restore health to you. I will heal you of your wounds, says the Lord. We believe also in good science. As someone who has studied and is studying, I firmly believe in the power of science. Every true science finds its genesis in God. God is the master scientist. He believes in medicine. He believes in natural healing because he's the God who created all these things. But there is science, falsely so-called, science that we have seen the effects, the, the pharmacia, how it has decimated nations and how people are sick. But God has a plan, his plan for healing and restoration. And we believe in good science. This is science that supports the Bible and inspiration. We also believe in inspired writings and we believe in the gift of prophecy. That is one of the identifying marks of God's special people at the end of time. We believe the gift was manifested in a very special way in the life and ministry of Sister Ellen G. White. And we utilize her counsels as a source of support and encouragement to us. One of the textbooks that we use in these lectures is entitled Counsels on Health. And this morning in your tip for, uh, for health and healing, it's tip entitled Avoid Gluttony. Avoid gluttony. Listen to this, ladies and gentlemen. It says, some do not exercise control over their appetites, but indulge taste at the expense of health. As the result, the brain is clouded, their thoughts are sluggish, and they fail to accomplish what they might if they were self-denying and temperate. These rob God of the physical and mental strength, which, he might, which might be devoted to his service if temperance were observed in all things. The word of God places the sin of gluttony in the same catalog with drunkenness. So offensive was this sin in the sight of God that he gave directions to Moses that a child who would not be restrained on the point of appetite, but would gorge himself with anything his taste might crave should be brought by his parents before the rulers in Israel and should be stoned to death. The condition of gl the glutton was considered hopeless. He would be of no use to others and was a curse to himself. No dependence should be placed upon him in anything. His influence would be ever contaminating others and the world would be a better without such a character for his terrible defects would be perpetuated. None, who have a sense of their accountability to God will allow the animal propensities to control their reason. Those who do this are not Christians, whoever they may be and however exalted their profession. The injunction of Christ is, be therefore perfect, even as your father which is in heaven is perfect. He here shows us that we may be as perfect in our sphere 
as God is in his sphere. May God give you the power over gluttony. Some of us, we can't control our appetites and our appetites will surely control us. This morning, we continue in our lecture and we are talking about a powerful potent herb and it is called the bilberry if you're hearing me you can type in the chat bilberry 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 some call it blueberry some call it bilberry but what i'm talking about is the bilberry uh, that is utilized to make the bilberry eyebright complex you see it in your uh, your your store, your your medicine uh, in the pharmacy. Bilberry, it's good for eyesight. Bilberry fruit, ladies and gentlemen. The bilberry first uh, came to the world uh, during World War II, 1939 through 1945, when pilots found that their night vision improved on eating the bilberry jam. Since then, ladies and gentlemen, research has shown that bilberries help the eyes to adjust to the dark, and they stimulate the part of the retina most involved in seeing clearly, especially in dim or dark conditions. There is also the suggestion that bilberry fruit helps to correct nearsightedness. You're struggling with vision this morning? Bilberry is an excellent way to help with the healing of the eyes. Now, it thrives in, in a moist undergrowth on moors, hillsides, heathlands throughout the temperate regions of the Northern Hemisphere. That is in Asia, Europe, North America. It's widely cultivated around the world, though, and bilberry is really propagated from the seed in autumn or from cuttings. The leaves are collected during the summer. And the fruit, when ripe in late summer or early autumn, is very, very useful for the healing of the eyes. Ladies and gentlemen, there are several other species of the bilberry, but we are talking, you have the cranberry, you have the cowberry, you have the beerberry, and these are all very useful, especially the cranberry, ladies and gentlemen, which is very useful as a urinary antiseptic. Several, all the bilberry families, they have antiseptic and urinary um, properties in them that really help for the healing of the urinary tract system and they have profound impact on the site. Now, what do we find in your bilberry? So, you know bilberry, you can get the fruit, you can get the plant. If you're able to see my screen here is a picture of the bilberry plant. It is um, the leaves, very, very useful, and the dried berries and the fresh berries are also useful. But I want to talk to you about what do you find in your bilberry. So number one, there are tannins. Tannins compose about 7% of your bilberry. There are proto-anthocyanins. Now, ladies and gentlemen, this big word, I tell you, it helps very much this component, this constituent in the bilberry, ladies and gentlemen, is very, very healing towards your vein, towards your vision, and it's an excellent antioxidant. Now you have in there flavonoids, uh, you have your fruit acids. In there, you have also phenolic acid. You have pectin in your bilberry. It's loaded with vitamin B2. It has in vitamin C and it has in that carotene, uh, which is very, very helpful for eyesight uh, too. So let's jump into the research because uh, we want you to understand uh, how and what has been said about the bilberry, why we are promoting the bilberry as excellent for you. Let me just tell you briefly, ladies and gentlemen, that the bilberry helps with circulatory uh, uh, issues in the body. So it has circulatory action on the system. It's an anti antioxidant, it's anti-inflammatory. And you know, in previous lectures, I did a whole series on inflammation. And you know that in the genesis of all diseases in the body, ladies and gentlemen, can find its way to inflammation. It is inflammation. That's why they call it arthritis and um, bursitis and, you know, all of these itis. 
inflammation, ladies and gentlemen. So bilberry is your anti-inflammatory plant. It is also an excellent astringent, you know, for the cleaning of the skin, and it helps to, to really improve uh, the skin, blood flow to the skin, that kind of stuff. It's also helpful as a urinary antiseptic. So it goes into your urinary tract system, ladies and gentlemen, and if there are any uh, parasites, any bacteria, anything that's that's lodged there, uh, problems that you know individuals struggle with urinary tract infection, UTI, and all these things, the bilberry has been shown to be very, very healing on the urinary tract system. Now, in 1964, clinical trials have shown since then that bilberry fruits protect peripheral circulation and your capillaries. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, symptoms have been shown to improve with bilberry extracts, include fluid retention, pain, pins and needles that you have, which is your, your paraestesia, uh, para um, you know, your cramps, you know, those struggles that you're having that's really resulting from impaired peripheral blood flow. So lack of blood supply to those extremities. The bilberry has been shown to improve circulation and research has started on it since 1964 and it has been continuous and it has been ve proving very positive for circulation. We talk about eyesight. Several different um, trials have also shown improvement to eyesight in nearsightedness. Um, in those with retinal damage due to diabetes and high blood pressure. In patients taking bilberry extra, beta carotene, and retinol, researchers have found that there has been improvement in the site. Other con conditions such as our ladies who are still uh, dealing with period pain and recovery from hemorrhoid operation may improve with bilberry. Now, bilberry, ladies and gentlemen, has been used for digestive problems also. The fruit has long been used as a mild laxative because of its sugars and to relieve diarrhea due to the tannins. It's also moderately antibacterial since it tastes pleasant. It's useful for treating diarrhea and indigestion in children. So it's a very safe her herb for our kids. Circulatory disorders. Uh, you know, when you look at the, the plethora of research out there on bilberry, you will realize, ladies and gentlemen, that it will, it's a great benefit for those who are dealing with circulatory disorders. Uh, the fruit has the ability to uh, really improve the capillary function and heal inflammation. And um, what I mean, uh, you have, uh, th this, this includes uh, really the intermittent uh, claudication. We're talking about Raynaud's disease, individuals who are struggling with varicose veins, those who are struggling with hemorrhoids, um, those who easily bruise. You have some individuals, they easily bruise, you hold their hand or they get an easy squeeze and they bruise. Uh, the bilberry is very helpful if you struggle with that condition. And any condition that affects blood flow to your eyes, okay? Particularly diabetes and high blood pressure. So we know uh, so many individuals are uh, in the United States and across the globe are struggling with this great killer diabetes, which is totally reversible, type two, ladies and gentlemen, and God is able, I have seen it before my very eyes. So you want to utilize your bilberry in instances where you're struggling with vision as a result of the increase in pressure in terms of high blood pressure, very, very helpful uh, bilberry. It's an antioxidant. We talk about those um, proto-anthocyanosins. The fruit is used to protect against tissue damage and it may prevent cataract formation in the eye and to promote tissue healing. For example, in the gastrointestinal tract, ladies and gentlemen, or in the case of rheumatoid arthritis, the bilberry or osteoarthritis, the bilberry is very, very helpful as an antioxidant. It's an antiseptic. The leaves have a very marked antiseptic effect uh, within the bladder and the urinary tract, uh, urinary tubules there, and it can be used to treat UTIs such as cystitis. 
very helpful. It's also healing for the, it's anti-diabetic. The leaves and the fruit have an anti-diabetic activity, helping especially in pre-diabetic states. So I've worked with individuals who have come and say, Pastor, I've gone to the doctor. They have said to me that I'm borderline diabetes, borderline diabetic, as the case may be. Case may be. And I said, listen, I'm going to start you on three weeks of bilberry, the bilberry complex. You can do that or just natural organic bilberry capsules. I'll have you do two capsules a day or, or four, if I can get you to do uh, four or 500 milligrams of the bilberry capsules a day. Ladies and gentlemen, when they went back, blood sugar was under control. Not only did I utilize the bilberry, but we also set them up on the plan. You know, the plan is the ultimate for disease uh, prevention and we want you to all of God's children online this morning to set up on the plan if you need to hear more about that you can always reach out to us and we will share with you in a health consultation but anti-diabetics if you're pre-diabetic if you're borderline if you're prone if it's in your family make sure that the bilberry is a part of your medicine chest at home. It has, the, the research is also shown, recent research that we're looking at is showing that it is also um, helpful. The fruit helps to promote weight loss. So naturally that is. So we want those who are struggling, you can utilize the, the bilberry. Now, pastor, tell me, pastor, what parts of this plant can I use for healing and how do I prepare it? I'm so glad you asked. The leaves, they make very, very useful urinary antiseptic and astringent for urinary tract problems, cystitis, irritable bladder, you name it, ladies and gentlemen, very, very helpful for that. So the leaves, so you use the leaves, you use the berries. They have a strong healing effects on your capillaries, especially on microcircuitry within the eyes. You know, the eyes have these tiny little capillaries, ladies and gentlemen, very, very uh, tiny. And uh, in order to reach the various areas of the eyes, the bilberry has a very, very, God has created it in such a way that it has the capacity to reach and to impact microcirculation within your eyes. So the berries, the fresh berries and the dried berries are utilized. Now, if you're taking anticoagulants, Okay, or you're diagnosed with, we're we talking about uh, Coumadin, uh, we're talking about uh, you're diagnosed with a bleeding disorder, or you're taking medicinal doses on the professional advice, ladies and gentlemen, um, you want to avoid bilberry, uh, ladies and gentlemen, because it has the capacity and the ability to thin the blood. Uh, you can utilize the capsules uh, you can take four, 500 milligrams of the capsules a day to improve circulation within the eye. You can also make a tincture and you can take a half a teaspoon of that tincture a day for poor circulation. You can do the decoction of the leaves and of the stems and of the berry. And you, it's useful for short-term treatment of diarrhea in children. And the tablets like the cap capsule, they're very convenient for long-term use. Cheers to this herb, this plant, the bilberry, ladies and gentlemen, good for your eyes. We're moving on quickly this morning as we're near the top of the hour. We're going to talk about one of those plants that I tell you it is so powerful, so healing, so therapeutic. I'm talking about valerian, the valeriana officinalis. Valerianesia. It is the it's an it's a perennial, ladies and gentlemen. It's a very erect perennial. Most of you who are from the Caribbean, you know Valeria. It grows to four feet, about 1.2 meters thereabout. It has a, a kind of pinnate that's divided leaves, and it, it bears some some pink flowers. Uh, pink, whitish flowers in, in some cases. If you don't know the valerian, and you might be able to see my screen, there's a little picture of it on my screen that you can view. Now, the valerian has been really used as a sedative and a relaxant at least since the times of the Romans. It was known to Dioscorides in the first century, who named it the Fu, uh, the sound of the word reflecting its on 
pleasant smell. If you know valerian, you know it has a strong scent. Now, valerian helps to relieve stress and has become an in increasingly popular remedy in recent decades. Valerian, it is safe, it is non-addictive, it's a relaxant, it, re it reduces the nervous tension and anxiety, and it promotes restful sleep. So you are, if you are one of those who can't sleep at night, Ah, uh, here comes the valerian. Very, very healing, very therapeutic on the body system. Now, let me tell you a little bit more about the valerian. It's native to Europe and the Northern Asia. Uh, valerian, it grows in the wild in damp condition. It's cultivated in Central Eastern Europe. And the plant is grown from the seed in the spring and the root and the rhizome of the two-year-old plants, they are unearthed in the autumn. Now, it is, it is very popular in South Africa. Uh, you have the Valeria capensis, which is utilized for hysteria and epilepsy. You have the Hardwicki, which is found in China and Indonesia. It's taken as an antispasmodic. You have the Ilganosa, the Valerian Ilganosa, uh, which is also used for cramps and menopausal symptoms by the, the Menomi people in North America. And you have the Walichi that is used in the Himalayan. It's also exactly works the same way as your regular Valerian. Now, the Valerian, as you know, the one we are talking about, the just the Valerian of Fisnalis, ladies and gentlemen, it has 1.4% of volatile oils, including barnum, um, barnil acetate. Uh, it has in beta carpaline, and you might not understand, but I'm going to break this down for you. It has iridoids in the in the in in terms of it has the 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 velpotrates in there. Uh, you have valtrate. You have isovaltrate. It has alkaloids in there. Uh, it's a sedative. It ha that's one of the key actions on the system. It's also a relaxant, muscle relaxant, keep you calm, relax. It relieves muscle spasm, it relieves anxiety, and it lowers the blood pressure. Now, in extensive research done in Germany and Switzerland, it has endorsed the use of the valerian to aid in sleep or to improve sleep quality and to lower your blood pressure. In a German trial that was carried out in 2002 that tested the valerian, and uh, oxa oxanopam, which is um, a conventional sleep treatment. It found both to be effective, but 83% of those taking valerian rated the treatment as very good compared to 73% of those taking your oxazap oxapam. Um, so it's better than your your sleep medicine out there that you're taking. That's in essence what this is saying to us. It's very healing very simple on the system. It has been known to as the all heal in the Middle Ages. Valerian was really credited with many virtues, um, especially with healing those who had epilepsy. And in 1592, Fabius Columna published a detailed work on the herbal medicine in which he claimed to have cured his epilepsy with the herb. So it's excellent as a stress-related disorder herb. Uh, it reduces mental overactivity, nervous excitability, uh, helping people who find it hard to switch off. If you're one of those individuals, you need a cup of valerian tea every evening. It is beneficial for almost any stress-related condition and in general has a calming um, rather than directly sedative effect on the mind. If you're dealing with anxiety and insomnia, ladies and gentlemen, uh, we're talking about tremors and those panics and palpitation and sweating can be relieved with valerian. It's a useful remedy for insomnia, whether caused by anxiety or over excitement. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, it's an effective relaxant. Valerian relaxes over contracted muscles. It's very helpful for shoulder and neck tension. For those asthmatic, uh, those who are dealing with colic, we're talking about IBS, irritable bowel syndrome, period pain, muscle spasm. Valerius, valerian is excellent for high blood pressure. It's used with other herbs in the treatment of high blood pressure caused by stress and anxiety. So chronic anxiety, insomnia, nervous exhaustion, premenstrual syndrome, sleeplessness due to backache, you utilize your valerian. The portion of the plant that is really utilized, ladies and gentlemen, is the root. 
and the rhizomes that are harvested in autumn when they contain the highest level of the active ingredients that we mentioned earlier. The dried roots and the rhizomes, they are utilized and the fresh roots. So, so the, the, value of, the value of portraits that I talk about in the rhizomes and the, the, the root is really what helps to induce sleep in individuals. Uh, caution, it can cause drowsiness and you, you should not take um, valerian if you're already taking sleep inducing drugs. You can take the tablets. Uh, they often contain other herbs that are used for stress uh, like your skull cap and all those other herbs we have used. The, there is a particular protocol that I've utilized, which is really powerful and beneficial to keep you calm and to keep you less stressed. You can take the tincture for anxiety. You just take 20 drops in hot water up to five times a day. If you are anxious, you can use the powder. It can be taken as capsule for insomnia. You can take one to two doses of a 500 milligrams at night. And the decoction, take one to five teaspoon, tablespoon rather, as a sedative at night. Ladies and gentlemen, cheers to the valerian, our second herb this morning on healing naturally with herbs. I hope this information proves helpful to you. I hope this can be a benefit to you and your family. You utilize that bilberry, you utilize that valerian, and you are going to reap the benefits because it's God's natural remedies. Now, let me tell you, ladies and gentlemen, there's a lot out there. You, there is valerian and there is valerian. The best is if you can get the natural organic herb, ladies and gentlemen, rather than those that are mass produced, make sure you look uh, for the natural valerian and you, you are to, sometimes I wish I was able to see many of you in terms of we were able to have a physical class. I could teach you a lot of stuff that I might not be able to teach online. You could at least smell some of these herbs and learn the different scents and how they look and that kind of stuff. So you can know when you have real valeria, but for the most part, you can find it out there real organic valerian it can be utilized and your bilberry and you have that as a part of your medicine chest okay so as i often say health for you health for me health for all mankind i thank god for you may i pray with you as we close this lecture this morning father we are so grateful to you for all your blessings for your goodness, for your kindness, for your compassion towards your children. Oh my God, we thank you for this message of healing and restoration. We praise your name for all you have done and all that you continue to do. We pray, Heavenly Father, that as your children will utilize natural remedies, their health will spring forth speedily. And as they follow your laws of health, those eight doctors you have given to us to keep us healthy and strong, oh God, may they remain in good health and may they see the glory of God manifested in their lives. Bless them today and every day and every person who shall listen to this recording is my prayer in Jesus name. Amen and amen. Health for you, health for me, health for all mankind.